Amen. Amen. I'm stepping over here because I want the camera to focus in. I asked if I could introduce this next song. And the song is Psalm 23. Okay? He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me lie down. If, if we could get the camera. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Amen. You know, the shepherd is the one that brought us here today. The shepherd is the one who inaugurated Sukkot, being outdoors. This is the best we can do this year with this tent, beautiful tent. But here we are by the green pastures. And as we sing this song, I'm going to pray for the spirit of the Lord to just let melt away the agitation of life, the agitation of the world, and let our muscles relax, our minds relax beside the still waters and the green pastures. Lord, bring your peace into our hearts and those watching on live stream today. Peace be unto you in the name of the one who causes us to rest on the green pastures. Amen. Oh, he leads me beside green
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. Let's just have a couple of moments of reflecting on these words as we play an instrumental here in the background. The goodness of God that leads us to those green pastures, the still waters. Hallelujah. Let's take a few moments. God for those living waters refreshing us this morning, this afternoon. Thank you, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Well, again, Hag Sameach, everyone, those of you who've been arriving. We're going to have a, uh, a little prayer time with the Lulav and the Etrog, and I've asked four people to come on up. I'd like all four of you to please come up now, and Ronit is going to lead us. We're going to be facing the four different directions as we hold the lulav and the etrog. I'm going to give this to you, and we're going to be praying for revival, and we want you to join us. Those of you who are joining us on live stream, join in on the prayer. These are prayers in the four directions. North, south, east, and west. Amen. So if we can all face north, let's do it together. And if you're at home, you can find your compass and face north. Lord God, we just thank you, Father. We thank you that you are he who raises the dead. And Lord, in the name of Yeshua, we are asking for revival, Lord. We are asking you to come by your spirit and to raise the dead from the north, from the north country, in North America, in Europe, in the northern end of our city, oh God. Father, we pray, let your spirit go out over our dead. Let them rise up with your dead body. Let them live. We speak to our dead. Let them live. We speak to the north. Do not hold them back. In the name of Yeshua, we're asking Father, come and breathe on our people. Come and breathe on our families. Raise them up with your own Son, O oh God. Bring the fragrance of your Spirit and of your presence over our people, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God, on our people and look upon the face of your anointed one, God. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. And now we're going to face south, and Eugene is going to lead. Shema Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Hear us, O Lord, King of the universe, as we gather humbly before you on this day, rejoicing in your presence and your days of the harvest. And as we come before you, we pray for the nation of Israel that there will be also be a harvest of people for you in their land, that you will pour out the spirit of awakening in your chosen people. Lord, stir up the hearts of the Jewish nation to hunger for your word. Turn their face towards you and know that you are God. Engulf us with your spirit that it may spread like a wildfire as we pray for revival in Canada and in the land of Israel. 
We thank you that you are to do what you said you would do and turn your people away from godlessness. Open the eyes of their heart, Lord, that they may see you. Open their ears to your word that they may know you. Open their mouths that they may sing you praises and glorify your name. Lord, we also pray for our country, Canada, as we are led by a government that denies your law. Help us to remain, help us to remain firmly planted in your word. Help us to be strong, to take courage and not be dismayed for your word says that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We acknowledge that you are in control of all things and we thank you for that promise. Strengthen the hearts of the righteous so they will be an, an immovable rock in the face of adversity, but soft and willing for you, Lord. Selah, Lord, also pour out your Holy Spirit upon the youth and this next generation. We know we are living amongst an ungodly generation. Bring up men and women who will serve you and receive you as Lord and Messiah. We pray that they turn from the appeal of the world, that they turn from mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, and take up your cross to find their life in you. We pray that many will receive you and follow paths of righteousness, and that we will all go out together, the lost sheep of Israel, in the house of Israel. Hallelujah, 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 in Yeshua's name, amen. Woo, amen. Okay, Jordan. Jordan is going to lead us in facing east. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, east. Yes, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come. We ask you to come in a special way, Lord God. Thank you, Father, Lord God. Thank you for this, this country, Canada, Lord God, where we have freedom. And thank you for Israel, Lord God. Thank you for your special nation, Lord. You said nothing can touch the apple of your eye. And God, we speak. We speak over Israel, Lord God. We speak your Holy Spirit, your fire to come. We ask for freedom. We ask for uh, ungodliness to flee from Jacob, as it says in your word, Lord God. Open the eyes of your people, Lord God. You said, Father, Lord God, that you would... You would uh, cause a resurrection from the dead, Lord God, that when the Jewish people turn to you, this is a resurrection from the dead, Lord. This is the time of great revival. If this isn't the time, we don't know when it would be, Lord God. This is such a time in history, Lord God. And we ask that in this Kairos season, Lord God, this appointed season, you would uh, rain down in Israel. Rain down here in Canada, Lord God. Rain down over the government. Rain down over the children. Rain down over the teachers. Rain down over the synagogues and over the, the churches everywhere, Lord God. Touch people, Lord God. Revive us, Lord. We ask for a spirit of revival, a spirit of prayer, a spirit, Lord God, that seeks your heart, Lord God. Denies wickedness, Lord. You said, Lord, that you would, uh, if we turn from our wicked ways, and Lord God, that if we humble ourselves, Lord God, you would hear from heaven. And Lord, we thank you for hearing from heaven now and that you will heal our land. And we thank you for that healing anointing upon this country. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. And Natalia is going to take the lulav and etrog and we're going to face west now. We're going to pray uh, to the west. Dear Lord, we bow down and worship you in uh, our adoration before you. You're God and King of all the universe, and you are on the throne. You sit on the throne in spite of all the evil and corruption, Lord, around us. And we pray for your spirit to be poured out on your people during this high holiday season, Lord. We pray for the spirit of revival to touch people's hearts. And we know that you promised that in the latter days, uh, young people and children will see dreams and visions, Lord, and will come to know you. And we pray for the season to start. And we pray for your children to see dreams dreams and visions about you and to see the word of God and to come to you they are only God and their only Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach and we pray for fear of God to fall on all flesh Lord 
We pray that people will have the fear of you. We pray for the government of Canada, the government of United States, the government of uh, uh, Russia and Israel, Lord, to have the fear of you and to make the laws that are honoring to you and pleasing to you, Lord, protecting your people and peace on the world, Lord, in, on earth. We pray for revival, Lord, in Israel and among your people throughout all the world. In Yeshua's name, uh, we pray. Amen. 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 You may have a seat for a moment. Did we mention this was going to be an all-day service? No, we, we had some more worship today than usual, and it's great to be here together once again. And just going to take a moment to uh, mention about this is Shabbat, and we usually take up an offering on Shabbat. And of course, this is also Sukkot. And so we do have debit and credit card machines here in the back, and there's a place to put that. Also, if you're watching online, uh, please visit cityofdavid.com. You can make an offering there as well. And I want to read specifically what it says about Sukkot. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, right here in Sunderland. Um, three times, one including the feast of it's uh, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and the feast of tabernacles, and it says they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. In other words, it's a time to reflect upon the tremendous blessings of God upon our lives and to bring a special offering to the Lord. And so, I want to encourage us to consider. Not just our tithes, of course I encourage us not to be slack in the tithe, not to let it slide and slip and get to it next week and next week, to be diligent with the tithe, but also at special seasons to bring the Lord a special offering of gratitude, not because we have to, but because we get to do it. So Lord, I want to ask you to release your blessings upon us, upon this kehila here, upon those who are watching online, that your blessing and bounty, Lord, would increase in each and every family, and that uh, you would bless this offering abundantly in Yeshua's name. All right. Well, please have a seat. I'm going to do my best to give a brief message today. I'm going to ask everyone to come on in the tent. Guys, if you would come on in the tent, and if our ushers could please help, just bring everyone into the tent. Um, really appreciate that. So we're going to do our best to focus on the Word of God for just a few moments on Shabbat and on Sukkot. And if my pages and Bible does not blow away, we'll be okay. So... It is wonderful, once again, to be here on Shabbat, on Sukkot, together, outside. And, of course, the key feature of Sukkot is the sukkah. And we're in a, you know, a sukkah-like tent. Um, and, of course, it reminds us that God made us dwell in temporary shelters in our journey through the wilderness to the promised land. That's the idea of dwelling in Sukkot. And as we dwell in booths year by year, in essence, we confess, along with the great men and women of God, that we are strangers and pilgrims on this earth. And those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. We are passing through this earth. This is not our eternal abode. We are moving on into an eternal abode in heaven. And so during Sukkot, we declare, we are passing through this life, seeking the city which has foundations, 
whose builder and maker is God. And today, for just a few moments, I want to focus on Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 10 to 13. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the appointed time, at the Moed, Shnat Hashmitah, in the year of the Shmitah, the year of release, Bechag Hasukot, at the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord, in the place where he chooses, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and little ones, and the stranger who is within the gates, and the little ones are here with us, that they may hear and that they may learn to fear the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law, and that their children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. And so here in this verse, it talks about, I'm trying to get organized here. According to the rabbis, this year is a sabbatical year. The sabbatical year, remember, I'm not going to look there. I was going to look there, but I'm just going to explain it. In Leviticus 25, just like the Shabbat, six days you work, seven you rest, God ordained that there would be six years of harvesting, but the seventh year is a Sabbath year for the land. So the seventh, the entire seventh year is a sabbatical year. Now, when it talks about the Shemitah, it is actually not referring to the Sabbath year. It refers to something else. The year of the Shemitah is something else. And I want to read in Deuteronomy 15 what the Shemitah actually is. Deuteronomy 15, verses 1 to 4. It says, at the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. It's called the Shemitah. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it to his neighbor or his brother because it is called Shemitah la Adonai. Shemitah means release. It means to let it rest, let it go, let go of the claim. Don't hold it in your hands. Open up your hands and let it go. Open up your heart and release it and let it go. So you shall grant a Shemitah at the end of the seventh year in uh, at Sukkot. And so this is a release mostly, I believe, from personal debt. Can you imagine if you have credit card debt in the seventh year? It's done. How many can praise? Let's praise God for that. Hallelujah. Now, this Shemitah refers to financial debts. But Yeshua, our Messiah, gave a parable using financial debt and referred it to forgiving people for their wrongs against us. And I believe that the Lord is zeroing in on our hearts here. And this is the seventh year. This is Sukkot. And I am announcing a Shemitah, a release of holding on, holding people indebted to us. He gave a parable in Matthew 18 where this, this great, you know, landowner had two debtors, or had a debtor. He was calling people and asking them to pay their debt. One man owed him, I don't know how many, how, a lot of talents. I looked it up. In today's economy, it would be like billions of dollars if it was gold or millions if it was silver. 
So this one guy owed him a huge amount of money. You know, it's in Matthew chapter 18. And he begged him and said, please, you know, release me from this. And he had compassion on him and released him from the debt. And that's the word. He released him. He gave him a shmitah. But then this same guy who was forgiven this huge amount of money had a debtor in debt to him. It was much, much less money, a few thousand dollars. And he grabbed him by the throat and he said, pay up, man. And he said, please have mercy on me and I'll do what I can. And he said, no, I'm going to throw you into prison until this debt is paid. So the man who was forgiven of his debt did not release the man indebted to him. In this season of Shemitah, I believe the Lord is calling us to release those in debt to us. That man, he said, if you don't forgive, you get turned over to the torturers. In Matthew 18. Torture. It's, it's torturous to hold unforgiveness. It tortures our soul and holds others in prison. Now, I want to read very briefly here an account that was very moving to me. Maybe I won't read all of it, but it's an account um, of Corey Ten Boon. Corey Ten Boon, after the war, maybe I'll just give the give the summary. How about that? <laughs> Corey Ten Boon, after the war, she was a believer. She helped Jewish people in Holland and was arrested and was put into a concentration camp, as many of you know. Um, and she went back to Germany in 1947 and preached forgiveness in Germany in 1947 after the war. And she said whenever she preached forgiveness there, there were never any questions. They all just filed out quietly. And on one occasion, she saw a man walking up to her after the service. And to her horror, she recognized this guy was a guard in Ravensbrück um, camp where she was. This is the man who was a, a Nazi uh, guard who tortured Jewish people and treated people terribly. And like her heart sunk and she went cold and limp. And he came up to her and he said, Fräulein, I really enjoyed hearing about that my sins are like at the bottom of the ocean. He said, I've become a Christian. I've become a believer. And I know that God has forgiven me but I'd like to hear it from you. Do you forgive me? And he put his hand out to shake her hand. And she said, I looked down at my pocketbook and it seemed like an eternity went by. I had just preached about forgiveness and I know about God's forgiveness, but her heart was cold and limp and she, she just saw this guy in his Nazi uniform before her in her mind and was, you know, like gripped with, all, you can imagine the feelings that she had. And finally, she said, you know, even though I don't feel like it in herself, I am going to make a choice to forgive. And then she put out her hand and shook his hand. And she said, when I did that, when my hand touched his hand, suddenly there was like a warmth going through her. And she was instantly healed of this hardness of heart and she was healed and it it released her and it released him this call to release today is a call from the Holy Spirit to forgive those in debt to us even if your claim is valid you've suffered an injustice perhaps there's been an ugly divorce perhaps there's been a crime perhaps there's been uh, rejection.
perhaps someone has said harsh words to you. The basis of our giving a Shemitah, and I'm going to call you to announce a Shemitah in the Spirit over those who have held you, who have done you wrong, who have said words or done deeds. Based on what? Based on the forgiveness that we have received in our Messiah. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That is the basis of forgiveness. Based on the love of Messiah. And that people are not really in their right minds when they do this. They're not. Father, forgive them, for they knew not what they were doing. They were trapped by Satan, deceived by Satan. And God is calling us to a greater degree of liberty today under this tent, in this year of the, this, the Sabbath year, the Shemitah year of release, whether it's a parent who treated you harshly, who said things to you, who lost their temper and said things. God is calling on you to be released from your own prison, if you will. And that you can release that person from the prison that you are making for them. When we hold unforgiveness, we are really holding someone in prison. They're imprisoned to our claim. But when we release the claim, there's a great release in the spirit. And I believe miracles can happen through this kind of a release. And I have other things I wanted to share, but I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it at this one thing, the year of the Shemitah, the year to announce a release to those who we have a claim against. Maybe it's a rightful claim. Maybe it's not. Maybe just it's a perceived claim. But God is calling every single one of us to announce a Shemitah over that person. Even if it was real injury, if you release them, God will bless you. God will release an anointing in your life like you have never had. So I want everyone to stand up. Lord, I just do look to you right now. I want to thank you for this year of declaring Shemitah. It's Shemitah la Adonai. It's the Lord's release. It's the Lord's initiative. It's the Lord's calling. It's the Lord's word. This is the word of the Lord to release those who you hold a claim against, whether it's anger, resentment, maybe rejection, whatever it may be, and you at home watching, to release. The Lord is calling you to release the bitterness, the anger. Maybe it's a spiritual leader that you've had that somehow said or did something or didn't do something. Hopefully it's not me, but if it is, please, please forgive me. Lord, I just do look to you. Maybe it's a husband or a wife or a child. Lord, I look to you right now. And I'm going to ask if we can have just the musicians up here. I know this was very brief. I expected to do more here, but I just feel like there's a real anointing here right now to give release, and in the spirit, I proclaim the Lord Shemitah. I proclaim a release in our hearts, Lord, that our hearts would be willing to release people who we hold a claim against. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, we look to you for this right now. And I want you to just say, picture the person in your mind and announce a Shemitah. It's the Lord's release. Lord, I, I grant them release. 
I grant them release from the debt. I open up my hand. I open up my heart and release the claim. I give over the claim. I'm not going to hold it anymore. Now, if you do that as an act of your will, the feelings will follow. You've got to make a choice to do this. Lord, I look to you to help each one of us make a choice in our hearts. Whether it was a low-grade rejection or an utter rejection. Maybe it was abuse, verbal or physical. God forbid there may be someone watching here who's, God forbid, gotten raped. God is calling you to a release. Father, forgive them for they knew not what they were doing. If they were in their right mind, they never would have done it. Doesn't make it right. To forgive doesn't make it right. It just releases the claim. We're not holding it anymore. Let it go. Let it go. I call upon you, Lord, to grant each one of us to let it go now and to receive a deep release in the Spirit. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. And maybe we could just begin to worship the Lord here with a song, and we're going to have a little more prayer and close very shortly. It's an abbreviated service in some ways.